Last week, my dad came back from serving overseas in the war. On the day he arrived home, we made him a chocolate cake and we put up a banner decorated with American flags on the porch that said, Welcome home, Dad. But Dad wasn't the same. He had changed a lot from the war overseas. The excerpt you just heard is from a book written by these three middle school students. During the book, we put ourselves into the characters, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which kind of, it was like living a second life. life. Yeah. yeah. The title of the book is Daddy's Heart, My Heart, The Purple Heart. This fictional story is told from the perspective of a middle school student named Jewel. Her dad is a soldier that has just returned from war and is suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. We basically took some of our characters from our real life experiences, like Jewel, the main character. She's inspired by a little bit of all of us, I would say. Because it was a children's book, so we wanted kids to kind of connect to a kid's thoughts and what they thought about a situation. Like they The assignment for this project started out as a group essay, but their teacher, Mike Ryan, knew that what the girls were creating was something special. After the girls had given it to me, I took it home. I right, had a pile of papers on my desk. My dad came in, okay, saw the title on there, and being a Vietnam veteran, it piqued his interest, read the whole thing, and he said, you got to do something with this. Put it in my hands, walked away, never said another word about it. On the day we visited the school, the authors, along with family members, several of Mr. Ryan's current students, and some local veterans, all had an opportunity to discuss the process of writing the book. What part of the book did each of you write? We None of us really wrote sections. Yeah, it yes. wouldn't have worked. We didn't divvy up the work at all, because it would have it would have been weird if one of us did one page, the next person the other, because we're so different. It would have felt like a totally different story. Google Docs helped a lot because we were able to see what one person's ideas were, and we were able to edit those ideas or like add on to those ideas easier than if we were to just to type something out on our own and wait to see how the others would react. What did you learn from making the book? You have to keep going back in and changing mistakes. That the draft, it took three weeks. And then the editing and the pictures took all that was three months. The authors and Mr. Ryan worked through the summer to complete the book. It's also been nominated for an IndieFab Book of the Year Award, quite an accomplishment for these first time authors. They each have a very unique ability. Angela's ability to describe something, it makes you see it, it makes you feel it. And then Elizabeth, with the way she describes a character, okay, you fall in love with her characters. And then Maddie just has a way of taking like a little string and intertwining it, all the different pieces of a story and making it one fluid story. And, it's, and putting them together it came out brilliant. My favorite picture is this one because I think a lot of children can relate to this. I think photos are better than pictures because it gives it more of a real feel. Shortly after completing the book, Elizabeth and her family moved to Germany. She came back to the U.S. just for our TV interview. She also came up with the idea of basing the story around PTSD. While we were brainstorming, I told them the story about um, a cousin's friend. He came back from war and he had PTSD and he was struggling with his family, so I thought... When we were discussing um, a close family friend of ours who fought in Afghanistan and returned with post-traumatic stress disorder, and because of his struggle and what he went through, she really found a topic that she felt was important and inspiring to her. The book is phenomenal. Uh, in today's day and age, when we have uh, you know, 22 veterans uh, committing suicide every day. Uh, the more that read this book, the more we'll understand it. Uh, what helps spread the message that we, we're trying to get out to the, to the world, to the, the non-veteran public, and you know, books like this help to do that. You know, looking at these three young ladies, that you know, the country's in good hands later on. It really is. I feel like it would be safe to say that I feel sorry for both her and her father because they both have to deal with different sides of the post-traumatic stress disorder. The thing that I learned about PTSD that was interesting is that many people come out with it and they have to deal with it through the rest of their life. It's not something that's easy, it's, it's there. How did you decide on using the Purple Heart for your last line? 
that inspired us because it was a sign of hope. Mm -hmm. The book ends with Jewel's father speaking at a Veterans Day assembly at her school. Unfortunately, he suffers a PTSD episode while on stage. Jewel and one of her teachers, who is also a war veteran, help her father through it. As a sign of camaraderie, the teacher takes his own Purple Heart medal and pins it on Jewel's dad's chest, reassuring him that wounds can be both physical and psychological. I really love the ending of this book. I think it showed that there is hope for people that have this disorder. I think that's why this book is resonating with a lot of people. It's not just the veterans going through this traumatic event, it's also the family and the children. Mr. Richard Allen, a Korean War veteran and Purple Heart recipient, was unable to attend our taping due to illness. He loaned the students his medal for the photos. Unfortunately, Mr. Allen passed away a few weeks later. His medal and memory will live on forever in their book.